Tesla, believe it or not, had a good news and a bad news this week. I'll tell you about both, mainly to live out my dream of being called a Tesla fanboy and a Tesla hater in the comment section of this same video. State of Charge host Tom Malogny will be here and we'll find out which side he is on and we're gonna start, yep, right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of Tesla and electric cars, you came to the right place. So all you have to do is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Tesla had a busy week. Elon Musk told all Tesla employees that he wants Tesla service to be 10 times better than the rest of the industry. He unveiled the part three of the master plan, which was mainly about the infrastructure and supply chain management and then I just stopped listening. He also warned that another delivery hell is coming at the end of the current quarter, while BYD revealed that it's just about to start supplying Tesla with battery cells more than a decade after Elon Musk laughed at it, suggesting BYD, get this, lacked technology. It was also that time of the year when Tesla showcases an amazing drive-in diner and a movie theater that will never get built, and Tesla has sent me and other referral program prize winners an email asking us to submit our pictures to be launched into space by SpaceX. I'm thinking about this one. Ah, uh, that was a wonderful love story while it lasted. But let's get to the two biggest stories of the week, and we're gonna start with the good news. Tesla Cybertruck made an appearance at the pg and &E event celebrating the latest Tesla battery system installation. And in case if you're not familiar with pg and &E, it is an energy company here in California, which when not providing overpriced electricity, spends its spare time burning down half of the state. At the pg and &E event, the newer version of the Cybertruck had some interesting changes. The controversial wiper blade was updated, but the big news was the few interior shots that were snapped showcasing the new instrument panel which wasn't there before. That now suggests that the interior of the Cybertruck will most likely be very similar if not identical to the Model X and S. The dashboard no longer features the white marble finish to match my gym's shower walls seen on the original prototype which I had a chance to write in at the unveiling event. You're watching that video right now. And this is good news because this way Tesla can share the very same parts already in production, which will help bring the Cybertruck to market faster. Of course, the Model S and X production lines are in Fremont and the Cybertruck will be made in Austin, so that could be a bit of a challenge, but it should also be easier to port the existing software into the Cybertruck. As a matter of fact, it appears that it's the Model X software that is on the display in these spy photos. The Cybertruck is expected to go in production next year, the phrase that's been used every year since its unveiling in 2019, and it sounds just as exciting now in 2022. Now, let's move on to some concerning news, and if you are a Tesla super fan, I suggest that you remove your children and people with heart conditions from the room. I'll give you some time to do that, but meanwhile, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Electrify America, the largest public fast charging network in the US that provides the freedom for all EV drivers to go where they need to go, including coast to coast. With over 800 locations across the US, with more than 3,500 individual DC fast chargers nationwide and growing. Download their app to find hundreds of locations and sign up for their Pass Plus membership for discounted charging sessions. Get started using the link in the description of this video. Tesla's autopilot and the full self-driving feature has been under scrutiny for a while now, including on this channel, while parts of its functionality and even its name is disallowed in some parts of Europe. As you remember, a few weeks ago, I even had a tech billionaire, Dan O'Dowd, running for the US Senate on just one issue of banning Tesla FSD from the American roads. But things may go really south for Tesla as NHTSA is shifting its investigation into Tesla's FSD into one of the final steps that is required before seeking a recall. And yes, 
That's how they pronounce the name. Hi, I'm James Owens, Deputy Administrator of NHTSA. Now, I don't know what the procedure is to recall that, but I'd like to report some unsafe mouth movements. Anyway, NHTSA has added many new cases and issues to the list of its investigation, mainly going after Tesla's FSD failures to suddenly break when there is nothing on the road or not break at all when there is actually something there, in many cases an emergency response vehicle like a fire truck. Making something out of nothing and doing nothing when there is actually a problem. Huh. Didn't realize that Tesla FSD and my college girlfriend ran on the same software. There are also reports that the likelihood of an accident has gone up after Tesla has ditched the radars and went with vision-only approach, and that includes some of the safety testing results. But that's crazy, because well, why, 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 why would this happen if you ditch the very technology that was designed to see better than your eyes or cameras and then improved over the next two decades? Nah, uh But if this investigation ends in a recall, it is very possible that either the entire FSD package or a big part of it will have to be blocked, much like parts of them are already in Europe. Obviously, the block will be temporary until Tesla is able to correct these problems, which at this point it hasn't been able to for almost two years. Not only that will remove one of the biggest features of the Tesla brand, but Tesla will have to figure out what to do do with those customers who have already paid for the package up to $12,000. Now, I don't know why people pay so much for it. I mean, if you want your car to just break for no reason once in a while, you know, you can just ask my dad to drive you around. He's not doing anything. Uh, he'll probably do it uh, like half the price and will even insult your life choices as a bonus for free. And that costs way less than therapy co-pays than $12,000. But uh, for more, we turn to the host of the State of Charge YouTube channel and a man who insists to go around the stationary parked fire trucks, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, we're back on Zoom, but it was great to see you in person in the Netherlands while we were checking out uh, Xpeng Motors. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's always good to get to see you in person, Alex. We don't get to do that too often anymore. I know, I know. Okay, well, let's jump right in. Uh, let's get to the uh, good story uh, that I thought was a big deal for Tesla this week, which is, you know, the interior, at least, of the Cybertruck is coming together. Looks like they're going for the Model S, Model X. Uh, do you think this is a good thing that they're actually trying to um, kind of uh, make it very similar, if not exactly the same as the models that they've already been making for a while? Yeah, I mean, that's fine on the interior. Stick with what works. I think the new S and X look great on the inside. So why reinvent the wheel if it's not needed? Well, they literally reinvented the wheel with that interior. But, you know, I guess what I'm asking is that, you know, because people are expecting such a different and unique exterior, do you think they would be a little disappointed that the interior is pretty much the same as other models? You know, I'm not so sure it's going to be the same. I think there's going to be design cues. They might share some of the components, but I'm sure the final product is going to have its own distinctive look and feel. All right, fair enough. Now, um, listen, I, I know you just bought an F-150 Lightning. It's, it's just about to come there. I have one in my garage right now because I got a media car, so we'll compare notes later. Uh, is the Cybertruck, which I know your reservation called her for, is still something that you're... Um, that you're willing to get uh, when whenever it is actually out? Yeah, I'm going to get one. I, I, I made a reservation. I wasn't a super early reservation holder, so it's probably going to take me a while to get one. But I definitely still want to take delivery, make a ton of videos, really compare it to the F-150 Lightning, also the Rivian R1T. And then we'll see from there whether I keep it or not, or just keep it for a year and then sell it. All right, I guess you'll be like a Jay Leno of electric trucks. Just stash them into your garage and start collecting them. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on to another story, which I think is not very bad yet, but could be. Would you agree with me that I say that uh, NIT's investigation, if it does end up in a recall, could be um, not good for Tesla? <laughs> well, recalls are never good, Alex. And yeah, it'll be interesting because... I'm not sure how Tesla would be able to deal with it because if they haven't been able to fix this issue yet, what makes you think that they can all of a sudden fix it if NHTSA orders a recall? 
Right. So that's the concern, right? Because if they could uh, avoid all these issues, they would have already had it out. Uh, now, so what do you think would be the thing that would be the right thing to do if Tesla has to limit the full self-driving and autopilot features that people paid up to twelve thousand dollars for? So, I, you know, that's a That's a great question. It's a great call. They obviously can't continue to, to sell it for that price if, uh, you know, and we're just speculating here, if NHTSA orders it to be disabled, you know, and um, I wouldn't say that they would be immediately refunding people's money because I think what they would do is be given a certain time period to figure out a way to make sure this issue doesn't reoccur. Uh, but if that time period passes and they're not able to de de deliver a satisfactory fix to NHTSA, I mean, you know, it's a huge issue for Tesla. I mean, something that could cost them hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's let's hope it doesn't come to that. If we were to combine these two stories, what do you think is more important for Tesla? To get the Cybertruck out in, in, in production, hopefully avoiding the production hell, or finally getting the FSD right where no one's on their butts about it, including NHTSA? I mean, that's that's you know, a tough question. I'd have to go on the side of safety. Uh, that's more important for them to make sure the, you know, I think the, the, what's, what's the number of vehicles that they're expanded their, their look into now, like 900,000. I mean, it's almost a million vehicles on the road. I think the, you know, the priority is to make sure those vehicles are safe. And I'm not saying they're not safe at this point. I, I you know, I have one of those vehicles and, you know, for me, the autopilot's been fine. Of course, I haven't had any kind of issue with it running into an emergency vehicle, but I pay attention when I'm driving. I mean, part of this problem is that the drivers aren't paying attention and they're relying too much on the autopilot. And that's not the way it's supposed to be used. You're supposed to be watching at all times and take over before you run into the back of an emergency vehicle. That's good advice on what to do before you run into a back of any vehicle. And for more of that, don't forget to subscribe to Tom's channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it